Excuse me, buddy. Oh, you drooling. Okay. So, uh, oh, yeah, that's a heavy one. Oh. Hey, welcome to Tony Tone Barbecue. I'm Tony. And about a month ago, I posted a short video asking if you'd be interested in learning how to cook a whole pig. And a ton of you said yes. So here's the video. So listen, I hate long intros. I'm going to try to make this quick and short, but this is important. So listen up. The video you're about to watch is long, but it was an 11 hour cook. So what do you expect? I can make you a really short video that's less than 10 minutes long with a few pretty images of the pig before it goes in and a few pretty shots of the pig after it's been cooked. And, but it's the stuff that's in the middle that's important. So during this video, I'm gonna review a ton of stuff. Every clip I try to include really good information for you. When I do a video, it's I try to make it like you're actually here with me, cooking with me all day long. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I did the night before to get ready. I'm gonna tell you in another clip how I got the pig, where you can get a pig. I'm gonna tell you how to prep. I'm gonna show you how to get it ready to go. I'm gonna show you how to load it in the smoker. Then I'm gonna show you a lot of important stuff about how to manage the fire, how to maintenance your smoker. There's all kinds of stuff that are packed in here. Not only that, stuff goes wrong and you don't get to see that in a lot of videos, but this is a one shot type deal. I only got one pig and I only get to do one shot of doing all these things and you're gonna see some stuff happen. You're gonna see batteries die on thermometers. What I do to recover from that, you're gonna see what happens when a piece of wood doesn't burn right. There's a lot of little stuff that actually goes wrong during the course of an 11 hour cook in most cases and I'm gonna show you how to recover from those things. So. Do yourself a favor, watch the entire video, maybe not all at once, but save it and come back and finish watching it later. Maybe take some notes because there's some good stuff in here for you. So um, with that, ready to rock and roll, let's do this. One more thing real quick. Huge thank you to all my subscribers. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for all everyone for all your comments and questions. You're the reason why I'm doing these videos. And uh, if you like what you see here, don't forget to hit the thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and uh, I'll keep putting out some good stuff for you. Thank you very much. Here we go. All right, it's a little after 7.30 a.m. on Sunday morning. I've got uh, my setup here ready to go, so now all I need to do is come over here, light this fire, and we'll get things rolling. Well, this thing ain't working all that great right now. Come on. That's better. I got overfilled the gas. <laughs> All right, that'll do. This is a real cook I'm doing here today. There's no uh, retakes. I've uh, thought about what I'm going to talk about and then share with you guys. But uh, at the same time, I only get one shot at doing things. So uh, stuff like this, you know, it's going to happen. And uh, we'll see how things work out. I think this is going to be a great cook today because uh, I've done all the preparations that I normally do for any cook. So uh, I think things are going to go smooth. What we're going to be using to start off this cook with is going to be a chimney full of lump charcoal. This is a Weber chimney starter. And um, I've got it full of the Jealous Devil lump charcoal. I am using this to start just to get the heat going and warm up and preheat the offset smoker. What I'm going to actually be cooking the pig with is I've got a tote full of chunks, splits of oak wood. This is just natural oak that I've, uh, they come in long pieces. I've cut them down to these uh, six to eight inch pieces and I've split them. so that they're a size that's appropriate for the size of the firebox on my offset smoker. And um, so this oak wood is what's gonna be really giving this pig a really, really great flavor. So I'm gonna show you how I get things started with that chimney full of the lump charcoal and then uh, get things going and getting the flavor from this oak. Now, the last time I did this pig, it ran about eight hours. And the last couple of hours I switched back over to the lump charcoal because I felt that it had enough good flavor and absorbed enough of that smokiness from this oak wood already. So uh, we'll see if we do that this time. Um, I haven't quite decided yet. So the pig that we're gonna be cooking today is a uh, 32 pound suckling pig. 
and uh, I'm guessing it's going to take anywhere between seven to eight hours to cook. We're going to see how that works out and uh, let's get the old Char Griller Grand Champ uncovered. All right, let's uncover this guy. This is the Char Griller Grand Champ XD. At the time of making this video, Char Griller is not paying me to talk about their offset smoker. However, I do enjoy sharing information about tools that I actually use and uh, that actually work really well. This has been a great offset smoker. It's big, it's heavy, it does the job. And uh, I might reach out to Char Griller and see if they want to work something out because I've probably sold a lot of these things for them. So um, this pig fits very nicely inside this offset smoker. You're gonna need a, an offset smoker uh, of similar size. Um, this isn't a huge offset smoker. It's not very expensive. It's actually very affordable and very high quality. Um, and it's something that uh, you can pick up at uh, Home Depot. And, uh, but any offset smoker that is about the same size is gonna work really well for this uh, suckling pig. So we're not gonna need this rack, so I'm just gonna take this and stick this off the side. That rack will actually be in the way because the pig's gonna sit up a little bit higher. The pig's gonna go right here on this rack. So I'm gonna get this out of the way for a second because inside there is a charcoal pan on the inside of this so you can actually do some direct grilling um, over coals right here inside the main cooking chamber of this offset smoker and it's got a deflector here i'm going to get that smoke deflector that heat deflector out of the way i'm going to get this guy out of here also because we're not going to need this today excuse me buddy so i'm just going to set that over here and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to get some uh, aluminum foil excuse me packer and I'm going to make a big tray with uh, just some heavy duty wide aluminum foil. I'm going to set it right down inside here. You're going to see that in a second. And that tray I'm going to use to collect all the drippings from this pig. Because when this pig cooks, there's going to be a lot of fat rendering out of it and juices coming out of it. And it would pull up inside here. And the last time, I, and I normally do put uh, aluminum down below to catch the drippings from whatever I'm cooking. So I'm gonna use a big sheet and it makes cleanup a lot easier because then I can come back tomorrow after everything, everything's cooled and solidified and just wrap it up, roll it up and get it out of there. It makes it a lot easier to maintain your offset smoker. So you'll see that here in a second. All right, we're gonna get this. That'll do the trick. I'll get this back in place. What this does is it helps deflect the heat and smoke so it comes in a little bit into the chamber and fills out and spreads out the heat for you. And we'll go ahead and get the grate back in. All right, ready to rock and roll. Okay, this lump coal is ready to go. It did not take long at all to get that fired up. It's looking good. Let's get this into the firebox here. Oh yeah, beautiful. All right, now a little thing about this little Weber kettle that I used. So I've got this, I got that lump coal fired up on top of this Weber kettle. So that way it's not sitting directly on the concrete and it's a nice little safe spot, catches the ashes and everything. There's a second use for this Weber kettle. I like keeping it nearby during the cook and uh, you might see why in a few, okay? So just watch out for that. It's a handy tool to have nearby. So for this lump coal inside the firebox, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of arrange it all off here to the right side of the box. And I'm gonna leave plenty of room over here between the burning coal and the main cooking chamber. And there's a reason for that. If you've seen some of my other videos, I do this all the time. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my standby logs over here, right here, away from the fire, 
so they get really hot but they don't catch fire so when you get your wood nice and hot before it goes into onto the fire it will burn a lot hotter a lot cleaner a lot faster so it will minimize the amount of smoke that you're going to get um, the, the, the dirty smoke that you don't want when your wood is burning properly and you and you're gonna and you're gonna get good flavor from it is when the wood the smoke coming from your offset smoker is um, very thin kind of bluish hard to see sometimes you can't see it at all that means your wood is fully combusting like this wood right here this lump coal is burning that way there's you don't have any smoke coming off of that and when I shut this down you won't see a lot of smoke coming from the firebox from the uh, from the smokestack so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and close this now and uh, that's gonna let that heat start flowing over here into the main cooking chamber and uh, excuse me Packer big dog I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that the smokestack vent is wide open over here we'll close this up and now we're gonna start getting that heat flowing from the firebox over here where it's drawing air in from the right side it's going to be flowing through the main cooking chamber here in a minute here we're going to start seeing the temperature rise on this gauge here and then you will start to see some smoke coming out of here i already see it it's very difficult to see but there's uh, heat coming out of there as the air moves through there and you can see here the temperature gauge is already starting to come up so we're going to let that come up and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and get this rig really hot i'm going to be cooking this pig at about 225 degrees i don't mind if it's a little lower than 225 degrees i want a nice low temperature so we don't dry out the pig and, and burn it i'm going to let it cook until it reaches an internal temperature of 190 degrees um, around there i'm not going to say 190 degrees exactly but uh, in the area of 190 degrees so for however long that takes i'm thinking it's going to take around seven to eight hours might be let more might be less and um, but to get things started i'm going to let this gauge here get over 300 degrees i don't mind if it gets all the way up to 400 degrees in this preheat process the reason i'm doing it that way is because i want this entire rig to be nice and consistent and even end to end i think one of the biggest mistakes a lot of guys make when uh, you're using an offset smoker is to put your meat in too soon you don't want to stick your meat in too early it causes all kinds of problems you want to make sure that you're burning your fire nice and hot and that this whole thing is ready to accept your meat so what um we're going to let this get up nice and hot we're going to get her nice and hot and then we're going to let it cool down if it gets up to 350 degrees that's fine we're going to let the temperature we're going to let that pile of wood burn down until it gets closer to 225 degrees at when it hits 250 i might open it up and i might stick it in and that'll be fine because when i open the lid a lot of the heat's going to escape out of the main cooking chamber i'm going to be taking some time to put that pig inside here and the temperature's going to drop way below 200 degrees in that process and then i'll close the lid and then the temperature is going to come back up and at that point i just need to make sure that the fire over here isn't burning too hot so you can see right now the gauge is reading 150 and climbing but uh besides having this lump coal in here i do want to get some oak wood established into this cook so i'm going to go ahead and take this thinner piece here i'm going to add it to the mix that's just going to make for an even hotter temperature now this is the part where you got to be patient because it didn't take long to get the lump coal going didn't take long to get it in here and get the temperature up to 150 already but now the temperature is going to climb to 300 350 maybe 400 degrees as this burns i'm going to keep this vent wide open i'm going to keep that vent wide open so it's going to have full airflow and it's going to take a while for this to burn down enough to where it is at a safe cooking temperature which is going to be around at you know the goal 225 degrees so now is where i can go ahead and take my time getting old han uh, or uh, ham solo prepped up and ready to go in here so it's going to be uh, let's see right now it's eight o'clock straight up it might be an hour by the time it might be nine o'clock by the time i get uh ham solo in here so uh let's uh, see how that goes uh, look at that thing of beauty all right so i covered this up last night i've got my layers of plastic on here this table 
It's going to be my work surface. Okay. Now, Mr. Ham Solo. There he is. Get this thing out of here. Oh, yeah. That's heavy. Boom. Got them wrapped up real nice here. There we go. And there it is, 30, it feels like it's higher than 33 pounds. This might be uh, 38 or so, but uh, there she is, suckling pig. Now, when I'm done prepping it and it goes into the offset smoker, we're gonna lay him out like this. This is how he's gonna be in the smoker. All the legs under him facing forward. Right now what I need to do is I need to turn it over and uh, clean out the inside here. There's not a whole lot that needs to be done. I'm gonna wanna spread this open a little bit here. I might score this a little bit to make that a little easier, but uh, actually this one's pretty easy to do. All I'm gonna be doing inside here is I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna remove, like obviously we don't need these guys here, I'm gonna take those out, and I'm gonna remove anything else, like the little skin and stuff here, and uh, you'll see me do all that. Open this up a little bit. Oh. That works. All right, uh, let's get rid of some of the stuff. So to get pig like this, there's a couple ways you can get one. You're uh, probably not going to be able to walk into your local grocery store and find a pig like this. But um, most towns have a, a meat store, a butcher shop, where they specialize in just meat. I would definitely look up your local meat stores and go in there, talk to the, talk to the butcher, talk to the people there. They will likely be able to order one of these for you. I have found that they usually come in a range like uh, 20 to 30 pounds and uh, 30 to 40 pounds. And they usually charge a flat amount for whatever range you pick. You know, and uh, they uh, they might come frozen. They might come totally fresh, never frozen, like this pig came. And uh, you just want to make sure that when you plan your cook, you plan accordingly. You might want to look at your weather forecast for the next 10 days. Usually it takes at least a week to order a pig and get it in so check your weather forecast and then pick the day you're going to cook it and uh, make sure that you're going to have a decent weather on that day or weather that's acceptable enough for your standards to be able to do this job and uh, plan accordingly if uh, another way that you can do this is you can order it online there's several companies that uh, you can order a pig from. My last pig I ordered online and uh, that pig came sealed in one of those cryo bags whatever and uh, totally frozen. It When I re received it I put it in my freezer because it was going to be a while before I was going to cook it and then uh, it's got some little gland here and then uh, I made sure to pull it out and thaw it. I uh, took it out about four days before the cook and thawed it inside of a cooler 
a lot of people, you know, you might not have a refrigerator large enough to hold a big pig like this. So an ice chest, nothing special. Like what you saw there was just a regular old Walmart special Coleman. And uh, put it in there. I just put a little bit of ice in there in the bottom. Probably wasn't even really necessary. But uh, you just let that stay in your cooler. And just watch it. Come out and feel it every day. See how, how uh, firm it is. And if it, start, if it gets to the point where it's nice and and uh, thawed, then you'll want to go ahead and and uh, make sure you have plenty of ice in there to keep it cold for the day or two that it might be before you're ready to do your cook. So try not to take it out and thaw it too early so you don't want it to be just in refrigerated for too long. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just removing anything that doesn't look really appealing. That's it. That's that's the ticket. Okay, just what you want is just a nice looking, nice clean looking pig. See how it's just nice and clean looking. I got rid of that silver skin that was on here. Got rid of those glands that were here. Look for anything that looks like a little gland, a little ball of anything, and uh, just remove that. <clears throat> anything that you might not want to eat, just take that off of there because when this thing's done cooking, you're literally just going to be able to start getting in there and start uh, eating everything. So anything that doesn't look appealing because these glands and stuff, they, uh, they might not have the best flavor. <clears throat> so another another way to get the pig I'm saying online order them online and then uh, just make sure that you're prepared have it uh, have it in a freezer or when you receive it have it go straight into your cooler and uh, make sure you give it enough time to thaw out before you cook because uh, you don't want to try cooking one of these when it's still frozen All right, we're looking pretty good there. Nice and clean. All right, let's get this seasoned up. Uh, first, before we do that, we get some paper towels. Just want to go ahead and just pat dry the inside here. It's not much, so I'm going to make sure that's uh, not too wet or anything. We're looking good there. And... Uh, Let's see here. These legs are in good shape here. If that is one thing I'd, I noticed on the last pig is, is these didn't want to like spread open so easily. These are real nice. If that was the case, I'd probably just score that or, uh, or just cut that a little bit there, cut that a little bit there, make it easier to, to come apart. I think we're in good shape here on this one. Though, so I'm going to leave that alone. All right, let's talk about seasoning. Now, uh, I don't really like getting into seasoning too much, um, especially when I'm really talking about the process of doing something the flavor that you're going to get is a lot of it's going to come from the pork itself and it's going to be combined with the heat source that you're using in this case we're using oak wood so that that burning oak wood is going to let fl smoke flow all through this and it's going to absorb into this meat and it's going to create an incredible flavor so when you start applying rubs and seasonings and stuff like that you can get complicated you can do injections where you inject uh, different things directly into the meat, into the into different areas. And uh, really what you're getting here is on the surface and, and you're getting pockets on the inside. And yeah, when you, when you pull it apart and shred it, that's all going to get combined and everything in there. But uh, so today, we're not going to talk too much about seasoning, what, what you're putting on here. This is my, one of my favorite barbecue rubs. I'm not even going to tell you exactly what it is. What I'm going to tell you to do, though, is if you have a favorite barbecue rub, go ahead and pick that, use that, and apply it liberally because a lot of it's going to just be on the outside anyways, and there's got a lot of meat on the inside. So go ahead and put quite a bit on there. Don't worry about putting it on the skin on the outside because you're going to leave that just dry. Matter of fact, after we flip this over, it's going to give it a nice pat down with some towels to make sure it's nice and dry, and it's not going to do you any good anyways, so save your money there. But uh, if you don't have a favorite rub that you like to use, then just go ahead and, um, you know, 
find one. <laughs> go to your grocery store, pick one, go online, you know, pick one. Everybody's selling different rubs and stuff like that, hog rubs and barbecue rubs and everything else. So, um, or one of my favorites, I, this is one I will share with you. If you want to get nice and standard, salt and pepper, a little garlic. That's it. Salt and pepper, especially a little heavier on the pepper, uh, is great. And if you really want to have some fun, you like things a little spicy, throw some kind of a uh, 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 hot spicy pepper on there, some cayenne or some, uh, some red pepper flake, um, and uh, apply that to the mix. That makes things nice and fun. So that's all I'm going to say about seasoning, making sure I'm getting it all up in there. There we go. All right, I want to show you something right here. Right inside here, a little preview. See this area right here? The meat that comes out of this area right underneath this skin is incredible. It's like the most amazing bacon you've ever had in your life. So I uh, can't wait to show you that when this pig is done cooking. Okay, it's time to flip this over and uh, get it ready to go into the smoker. Okay, this was up over 300 degrees for a while. Right now it's showing uh, just over 250 degrees. Let's have a look inside the firebox. That lump coal is burned down pretty nicely. And so we've got a nice coal bed established. Yeah, there's that one piece of oak that's burned down nicely. See, these guys are so hot, they're already starting to smoke a little bit. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave those off to the side there. I'm not gonna put those on yet. Gonna get another standby piece of wood in there, maybe a couple, get those warming up. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead, figure out how to get that pig into this smoker. So got two choices. I could either carry that pig over here and set it in here like that, or I could take this out and bring this over here to the table. I think that's what I'm gonna do is bring this over to the table and Put the pig on it. I've got my high temperature gloves here. Makes this job easy. There we go. Now I can go ahead and get that pig right on here, get it positioned nicely, and then get it back into the smoker. All right, so dealing with a big pig like this can be a little bit of a challenge. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna want the uh, hams back here. I'm gonna want those closer to the fire because that's gonna be the uh, heavier part the thicker part and I'm going to leave it that way for most of the cook here but I'm going to also watch it and I'm going to see if I need to turn it around so one of the nice things about this particular smoker is that uh, if I want to I could just take this rack out and I could put pull it out and then put it back in backwards with this little handle facing the back of the smoker, and that'll be just fine. Now see, this guy, he's long. My last pig was uh, 35 pounds. I think this might, guy, might, guy might be heavier than what I was told because uh, this is a little bit bigger on the rack. It barely fits, but uh, it does fit perfectly. So what I'm gonna do now is a couple things. If you want, you can um, protect a few of the areas of the pig like the ears from getting all burnt out. Um, a lot of it kind of depends on how you're going to serve the pig. There's a couple different ways. Uh, so you might want to just put this pig on a big platter or on a table and you can have your guests um, just pick and pull meat directly off the pig. That's a real popular way of doing it. Looks really cool, but Sometimes there's folks that uh, don't want to be looking right at the uh, pig there as they're eating it. So if you've got that crowd, another great way to serve it is just to go ahead and uh, pull everything off, pull it apart. Just like you would a uh, you know pulled pork or anything else is go ahead and um, open it up and start pulling all the meat off, put it on a big platter and just serve all the meat already off of the, uh, the frame here on a platter and and uh, make some amazing pulled pork sandwiches and your know, tacos or whatever you want. It's, there's a lot of options you can do 
there's going to be a lot of meat. All right, so this is good. Now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap some aluminum foil around the ears to protect those. If you want, you might want to wrap it around the snout so that way the snout doesn't get all burnt out. Uh, last time I put a little bit around the tail, not even worried about that. I let that tail burn right off. And then depending on how things go, about uh, probably about four or five hours in the cook, Packer, Packer's really curious there, about four or five hours in the cook, I'm going to want to see what the internal temperature of this is. I know this is going to take a lot longer than four or five hours, so I'm not going to bother putting in any temperature probes into this until later on. After about four or five hours, I might take an instant read thermometer and pop it into the shoulder, pop it into the ham, and see what the temperature is at. I'm guessing it's going to be around 135, you know, and that at, at, by that time. And then I'm going to uh, decide whether or not I turn turn around. If the back end is way hotter than the front end. And I'm going to want to pull this out and turn it around, put it back in so that the head is closer to the firebox over here. And that way it starts getting more of the heat because ev almost every smoker has a, a hot zone. And, and your, most of your offset smokers, you're going to be hotter, closer to the firebox. We're talking maybe a 5 or 10 degree difference. Not a big deal. But still, that could make, over the course of a long cook, one end get done faster than the other end. So that's why we might need to rotate, but we're going to see how that goes. I'm not saying that's exactly what's going to happen right now. We're just going to pay attention and watch. But after about four or five hours, when it is starting to get up to the 145 range or so, then I'm probably going to go ahead and stick some, uh, some remote, some uh, wireless temperature probes in it so I can monitor the temperature um, of the pig uh, as it gets closer to being done which is the uh, 190 degrees. I'm also going to use the wireless just to monitor the internal temperature, the, the ambient temperature of the smoking chamber so that I know that I'm maintaining that temperature I'm looking for of about uh, 225 degrees. It's okay if it's a little lower than that. I really don't want to let it get above 135 degrees. I'm sorry. I don't want it getting above 235 degrees uh, for very long, very often, but that's going to happen every now and then, and it's not going to be a big deal. We're looking for an average temperature of 225 degrees. So um, let me wrap these up with a little foil, and then uh, we're ready to get this thing in the smoker. And we've got the ears and the snout wrapped in aluminum foil, and this pig is ready to go. Packer's ready to go, too. Excuse me, buddy. Oh, you're drooling. Okay. So, uh, oh, yeah, that's a heavy one. Uh, there we go slide that right there now one more thing i'm gonna do really quick before i close this down is i'm gonna put a temperature probe right over here to monitor the temperature all right i've actually got two temperature probes in here so that i can monitor the temperature in a couple different areas and uh, those will be transmitted directly to my cell phone so I can go about my business. This is actually the easiest part. So I showed you all the difficult stuff, which really wasn't that difficult. The most difficult thing about doing one of these is recording the video while doing it. Otherwise, uh, I'd just be rolling through this with no big deal. Once this is in here, all I got to do now is monitor that temperature, work that fire. So I'm going to show you how we do that. But right now, pig is in here. It's well positioned, fits just perfectly in this Char Griller Grand Champ. And uh, we're going to go ahead and close this lid and let her cook. Okay, it is 850, and I just closed the lid, and the temperature is uh, just around 132 degrees and rising right now. And the firebox here. Got a pretty weak little fire coming out of there right now. So we're going to go ahead and add a, another stick to this right here. There we go. And I'm going to let that see how that's lighting up on fire right away. That's what we want. That way we're not getting a bunch of dirty smoke flowing through this offset. So as that's taken off, give that another second or two. And then we'll go ahead and close this lid. We'll let that temperature come up. It's going to be a nice, gentle cook. Do not want to rush it. Remember, barbecue, smoking, it's all about patience. Slow and low for a long time. If we go too hot and fast, this pig can end up real dry. And man, that'd be a shame. We don't want that. So we're going to let this, it's burning nicely now. Go ahead and close this up. Now we get some good heat coming through here. The temperature is going to be coming up to where we want it 
And uh, so 8.50 right now, and uh, we're gonna see how long this takes. The time I get this thing fired up about seven, a little after 7.30 in the morning. So about an hour and 20 minutes of total time prepping. I was about right when I said earlier that usually is about an hour worth of uh, prep time. But uh, remember, I've been recording and talking and doing all this stuff, trying to explain everything. So that's slowing me down a little bit. But um, you can plan, give yourself a good hour to hour and a half. Um, work that into your schedule if you're trying to plan having dinner at a certain time or whatever. Make sure you account for that in the beginning of your cook. So uh, I'm going to let this temperature come up and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to review some of the things, uh, some of the things that happen as uh, I deal with adding more wood to the uh, firebox and maintaining that temperature and help you out with that. Okay, it is now 9.05, just about 15 minutes into the cook and I want to share something with you. A lot of folks ask, hey, why so many temperature gauges on your offset smoker? We've got three gauges that are actually on the smoker, plus I've got my two devices that I use for wireless monitoring. <clears throat> well, here's why. Okay, it's only been about 15 minutes. So this is why you got to be especially patient in the beginning of a cook because everything's going to settle in later on. We've got one gauge over here. This is the gauge that's closest to the firebox down low. It's, it's reading about 230 degrees. We've got another gauge up top here, right above the pig, way up high. This one's reading lower at about uh, 190. And that's the one that's usually higher. And then we've got another gauge over here that's reading way low, about 150. Now check this out. We've got the two wireless. This probe is reading 145. And that's the probe that is uh, way back, kind of right over here down in this area, right next to the pig's shoulder on this far side over here. And then we've got the other probe over here reading 227. And that one is way over here right near the ham of the pig down low back there really close to the firebox see this crazy range of temperatures why is that so as the heat is flowing from your firebox and coming into this smoker and this is why i wanted to make sure the whole smoker was nice and hot <clears throat> and even temperature before i put the even put the pig in there that pig right now is giving off all kinds of cold temperature. Now, if I just had a couple racks of ribs in there, you wouldn't see this. Even if I had a full like five or six racks of, of baby backs or St. Louis style pork ribs in there, you would not see this giant of a fluctuation. The reason we have this giant fluctuation is because there's a giant freaking pig inside there and that pig is cold and it is giving off it's just absorbing all that heat and releasing all that cold. And it's gonna take a while for that skin, the outer layer of that pig to start uh, kind of equalizing with the rest of the smoker. That's why that one probe right here, so in 145, well, that's that one that's nestled right in there, kind of a little bit in between that back foot and that front shoulder. So it's kind of really being surrounded by coolness coming off of the pig. So it's gonna take a little bit for all this to equalize and stabilize. My main point in here is don't freak out. Don't try to, oh my gosh, the temperatures are so low, I need to build a giant fire. Cause all you're gonna do by doing that is you're gonna burn the back end of this pig and you're gonna dry out the rest of it and it's gonna be nasty. So your first hour or two, really just take a breath, chillax, it's gonna be okay. And I would pay attention to your hottest temperature. Look for the gauge that's giving you the highest reading and pay that one the most attention. And um, don't let it go too high based on that one. If the other ones are showing low, that's okay. They're gonna catch up. Okay, so watch out for your highest temperature. That's why we have so many gauges and probes in different places. Because when we're doing something big like this, it really makes a big difference. It is uh, about 9.31. And now finally, the temperature has uh, fallen to a uh, range where I need to start uh, adding another piece of wood. We're at uh, 197 degrees here. Like I said, I just want to be careful and gentle in the first hour or two. Um, you know, one probe is still reading way low, 147. That's okay. Let's have a look inside the firebox here. Still a pretty decent amount of, of uh, cold bed here. That's what we're trying to maintain is a nice cold bed. It's putting off some good heat. Let's take one of these uh, thinner sticks. I'm going to put that right in there. Let that light up on fire. 
And uh, because I'm putting a thinner one on there, that one's gonna burn down a little quicker. I'm gonna be adding a, another piece probably pretty soon. I'm gonna throw another standby piece over there. I like to have some options in the box here. So that's a pretty thin one there. I'm gonna grab another kind of thicker standby piece. That one's gonna take a little while to get warmed up anyways. So I'm gonna keep that in the box. Let that get nice and hot. Gotta do a little rearranging here. Probably doing this just one hand and holding the camera. There we go. All right. So that's gonna that's burning real nice. That'll help maintain that coal bed. I uh, kind of like to alternate sometimes between a thin piece and a thick piece, so that I maintain the coal bed, but then I'm not also having to come out every 15 minutes to add more wood about every half hour, in this case, 40 minutes. It's a pretty good stretch there without having to add any more wood. So when it comes down to it, really, cooking something like this pig is actually really easy. The, the prep process and everything was easy. You know, getting a pig is probably the most difficult part of anything because you can't just walk into a grocery store and grab a pig and bring it home and cook it. Um, you got to order it in advance from uh, either a local butcher shop, shop or an online store. But... Uh, Really, the key is get good at working your fire in your offset smoker. Get really familiar with the size of wood uh, splits that your offset smoker needs so that you can run a nice clean fire and get that really good flavor and uh, make tending to the fire a really easy job. Uh, I'm just going to let this do its thing. I'm going to go about my business over here and do some other stuff. And my remote will tell me when the temperature has fallen to a point where I need to come back and add some more wood. All right. It's about uh, 950 right now and temperature has fallen down to about 192 by that one. Looking at uh, just over 200 over here on this gauge. So it's time to add a little more wood to the box. Yeah, that thin piece, it burned down pretty quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this one that's been in here for a while. It's nice and hot, a little thicker. Put that right there. And that'll light up here in a second. Coal bed is looking good. I'm going to give a little blow here. Sometimes they're stubborn. It'll go. There's a little flame. There it goes. A little more. Just want to let it burn a little more clean before I close that lid. Honestly, it wouldn't be a big deal if I closed it right now, but... There we go. Just in time for the dogs to start playing over there. That'll do. All right. Close her up. It's about 1020 now. So we are approaching two hours in and uh, temperature has dropped there pretty low. We're at 195. So uh, let's open up the firebox and see what we got going on in here. Burned down pretty well. I'm just going to Toss that a little bit, open it up a little bit, and 
Let's get another log on here. How about this guy? Pretty good size one. Oh, I was making a mess of that. There we go. That'll burn for a while. Careful not to let those get too close and light that other stick on fire. Yeah. Oh, this one's taken off really well. Get another one for the box. Put that guy right there. Okay. And we're gonna shut this down. Now, one little trick that I'll share with you right now is that um, got this airflow wide open. You see that thing that's burning in there really well. You can even kind of tell that the the flames are the flames are actually kind of being fanned because air is being drawn in through that hole because heat rises, so the heat's going up into here and it's flowing. The heat wants to escape, so it's moving across over here and it's coming out the stack. So that's that's creating draw. We're drawing air in from over there and pulling it through. That's why these flames look like they're actually being blown a little bit. Now, if I close off the stack, we look at those flames, they slow down a lot. So, open that back up. And they're being and again, that one's putting out a lot of heat. So sometimes if the temperature fires up too fast, like we got right here with that big piece of wood, I'm gonna slow down the airflow a little bit. Not enough to where I'm going to choke it off and create a smoldering effect. I still want that wood to be burning. I want flames, but I don't want it burning so hot that it is uh, overheating the, the uh, cooking chamber. So sometimes when you get a, a fresh, fresh piece of wood in there, you might want to just, like I've got it shut down here to oh, about 60%. Still plenty of airflow, but I'm going to watch that. I'm just going to leave that like that for a little bit and let that log kind of burn down a little bit. So I might have to watch this one for a little bit and uh, check, you know, keep it from climbing too high. But see, by doing that, look what happened already. We're already down to 134 and falling. So what I what you can do here is you can start opening it back up a little bit and watch that temperature gauge and get it to a point where it's kind of like, okay, this it's burning just right. And then leave it there for a while. See what a difference that makes? If I open it up all the way again, it won't take long that temperature start going the other direction. See that? Already. It's climbing. So, back it back down. Slow that airflow down. And then we are on our way down already. See that? So that's how you can control your temperature by adjusting your airflow a little bit. Notice I didn't touch the one over here. I'm still letting it get full air. I just slowed it down a little bit so it's not blowing at it really hard. That's how great this rig actually works. You don't need to put a fan or anything over here to get extra airflow. It works great. It's got great airflow already. So good that sometimes you gotta slow the airflow down a little bit. Generally, when you're burning wood, you want to make sure that wood is burning fully. It's getting all the oxygen it needs to burn really well. Otherwise, you're going to get too much thick white smoke, which is not going to create a really great flavor for your barbecue. You want that nice, thin, clean blue smoke. Now, there's a little tip for you on maintenancing of your firebox of your offset smoker. So i got news for you. Offset smokers are made out of, out of metal. Metal rusts. They all rust. They all do it. So um, what I do, if you notice here, it looks a little wet. So this is peanut oil in a little squirt bottle. In the past, I've also used a spray bottle. What I like to do is when this thing is uh, burning nice and hot, I just like to give a little bead like that and let it run. 
And what happens, I put a board down there to collect the drips. What happens is that oil is going to uh, basically dry up on there and kind of burn to the surface. And it'll do just like a cast iron skillet does. And it will create a layer on there that will protect it from rusting. You'd be surprised how good it works and how easy that is just to give a little, little squirt of oil. Not only will it protect the rust, but in some places like along your, your lid and everything, it'll even help create a better seal. So uh, that's it. You can do it with this. I, I actually wiped down the whole uh, main cooking chamber with oil. And uh, because of that, because it doesn't get as hot, it's even slightly tacky on the surface. This thing is just not going to rust at all. It's always the fireboxes that rust right away because they get so hot. And sometimes you even burn the paint off of them, but uh, your firebox is going to rust. But if you just coat it really well with oil, let that burn on there, you'd be, you'd be amazed how great it works at preventing that rust from building up and uh, extending the life of your firebox. All right, right now it's about 11.15. And uh, I want to show you something. See the smoke here? It's a little wider than normal. Now, I've added wood a couple times since the uh, last shot. figure you don't need to see every single time I add the wood, but I want to share with you anytime something weird happens. Every now and then you get a chunk of wood that just doesn't seem to want to burn right. And uh, you end up dealing with some thick white smoke, maybe some fluctuating temperatures. And that's this piece of wood right here. This thing, for whatever reason, just doesn't want to burn right. This other piece burned real nice. So here's what we do with something like that. I'm just going to take it out of the equation. So uh, remember that uh, use I had for that little Weber tabletop? I'm going to grab this junk and put that right there, out of the way. I can even put the lid on it, close it up so I can smother it out. And hey, there we go. Got good wood burning. We're back to good smoke. Right now, I don't think I need to add another piece. I'm just going to close up the lid, let temperature come back up. That's how we deal with that problem. No more problem. Already, the smoke has improved a lot. It is now 310. So little over six and a half hours and I um, haven't done anything yet. I really, I opened the lid and had a couple quick peeks at it. I've been running the temperature a little extra low and um, notice I've got one probe here showing uh, 204. The other one is still showing 170. There's been that big gap and a lot of what uh, is required in barbecuing real wood and offset smoker like this is uh, a lot of uh, instinct. You have to kind of feel your way around sometimes. And what I was figuring is happening is you get that big open cavity inside there that is collecting all the heat that's flowing up from the firebox and filling inside that cavity. And while that pig is releasing the cool air and, and cooling down the air inside of the uh, offset smoker. So um, that's why I've been running a nice gentle low temperature, um, you know, 200 to 215 degrees. So um, now, I want to see where the uh, temperature is inside this pig. So I've got a uh, instant read thermometer here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, poke this pig in a couple different spots and see what we've got. So let's open it up and have a look. There she is. You know what? Um, oh, that smells good. The color looks great. The skin is firming up nicely there. And, uh, Let's go ahead and take this probe and I'm going to poke into this, this shoulder right here. This area right here is what would um, you end up getting the Boston butt out of. And uh, it's all shoulder meat right here. This is a pretty meaty area. Over here is your rib meat, your loin up top. This is going to be a lot thinner, but uh, right here is where I want to check and see what kind of temperature we're, we're, uh, we're hitting. So let's go ahead here and notice pigskin's really hard. So you can't just, it's hard to just push and poke in. You kind of got to get a running start like that. Let's see where we are. Whoa, I did something to my screen on this thing. I'll turn that back on. Well, maybe the battery just died on this thing. <laughs> see what happens doing live? 
uh, I think I just killed my thermometer. So tell you what, I'm going to uh, pull up plan B here. Let's pause and we'll, we'll figure something else out here in a second. All right, I've got the old uh, analog here, regular style. I noticed we've got a little bit of red tint in this juice that came out of that hole. So I'm guessing this is still going to be a little bit on the low end. Let's have a look, see here. There's 120. This is a really big pig. So I'm not surprised it's staying a little lower at 130. Yeah, we're just barely over 130 degrees in that shoulder. Now let's have a look at this ham back here. Nice meaty part right here. There we go. And we're rising as expected. It's higher. We're at 160. We are approaching 180. And it looks like it's going to settle in there right below 180. That's good. I'm not surprised that we are closer to being done in the back end here than we are in the front. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and rotate this pig. So I'm going to rotate the pig so I get a little more of that higher heat towards this end of the pig and um, try to get a more, try to even it up a little bit, get that uh, pig to catch up a little bit. Let's see if I can set these over here. Oh, it's probably going to fall down. We'll see what happens. But, yep, see, told you. <laughs> get that out of the way and quiet that down. All right. So, Here's how I'm going to do this. Pull this out here and take off these probes. Get that out of the way there. There we go. All right. Probes are out of the way. Now, Make this easy. Take those two boards there. I'll slide this all the way out. And set them down right here. And come around. And back up. Oh, yeah. And back in. There we go. Now before I slide that all the way in there, I'm going to go ahead and reinstall these probes so I can continue monitoring that temperature. So uh, I'm going to go get these back in place and then we'll pick this back up. All right, one thing that somebody's been asking, people, a lot of people have been asking actually, is how big of a cooking surface this is here in the Char Griller Grand Champ. So I'm gonna take this measuring tape and slide it right through here. And this grate itself is just barely over 19 inches deep. And lengthwise, it is just about three and a half, 35 and a half inches long. So this pig right here, this, this has got to be about a 37, 38 pounder, is all of that 35 and a half inches really filling this thing in nicely. All right, I've got the, uh, the ambient temperature probes back in place back here. I've got one up front over here. That one's going to be showing a higher temperature. It's going to get in the heat directly. I've got one back here in the back end, so it's going to get the uh, temperature flowing back there. I also inserted a couple of probes into the meaty parts of this pig right here in the shoulder, right here in the ham, so I can start monitoring the temperature as it climbs. And um, as it sits now, I should just be able to let this go until it is finished cooking. So if I can get this back in here without, oh yeah, I'm gonna need my device that I've got right here. There's one. There we go. All right. That's in. We're looking good. Wires are good. Let's go and close this down. There we go. Fire's going, to go, going good again here. So close that down. And uh, now we just cook till it's done. All right. Check it out. It's a uh, a little bit uh, not as bright out here as it was earlier. You know why? Because it's, it's uh, holy crud, it's 8 o'clock. 
it's just after eight o'clock. This cook has um, grossly underestimated the amount of time it would take to do this pig. It has been 11 and a half hours. That is a long cook. And even so, still so we've got, I put an extra probe in this pig. We've got three probes in it. One of them is showing 196 degrees. That's up in the uh, front right, front left shoulder. I've got another one showing 181 in the uh, front right shoulder. And I've got another one showing 176. Let's have a look at this pig. And uh, let me explain what we got here. Skin, looking pretty good, a little dark. Yeah, it's been in here for a long time. So I'm not surprised the skin is looking a little dark, but it still actually looks really good. So I am not unhappy with the way this skin looks. And uh, the only thing that I'm noticing here is a uh, front trotter right here. It looks a little bit uh, charbecued. I'm not too worried about that either because I wasn't planning on eating that paw. What I think what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go ahead and let this pig rest. I'm calling it. I think that we're close enough. I poked it with a probe a few places and I'm finding temperatures in the uh, 180 plus range and that's going to be fine. I'm going to let it rest and uh, the temperature is going to continue rise doing that. And uh, let this sit here for maybe an hour and then we will uh, pull it and uh, get her opened up. I'm going to go ahead and pull these probes out and everything right now. And um, yeah, I'll probably just go ahead and take this out of here and get it set out on the table. It's been resting up and uh, I think it's time to open up this pig and see what we got inside. So here we go. Slice down the top there. Let's just go ahead and make a little cut there. Cut there. Let's pull this open. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Look at that. There you go again with a look at that. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, still pretty hot. Whoo. Wow. Oh my gosh. Check this out. That's that shoulder bone right there. This is going to be fun. Let me, let me, let me just pull that out of there. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Wow. There's the, uh, the actual shoulder blade that comes out of a Boston butt when you make pulled pork. Look how that just falls right out of there. Look at all that, that juice, that tenderness. Oh my gosh, this is all that pork shoulder right there. Wow, look at that meat. And then up here, we've got the ribs. Got that nice tender rib meat over here, up here. Look at that loin. Look at that. That is beautiful. Look how tender that is. Okay, so yeah, this pig is rather large. This pig is definitely a lot bigger than the last pig I did. That pig took eight hours. So now that I see actually how large and heavy this pig is, I am um, not surprised that it took 11 and a half hours. Getting it up to that range of about 180 degrees to 195 degrees, various spots. Um, wow, it's really, that was perfect. I think that hit it right on the mark. Let me, uh, let me take a taste of this right now. I'm going to grab a little bit of this loin here. We'll grab a little bit of this oh, right back here, right behind the cheek. That's some good stuff right there. Whew, it's still really hot. Let that cool off for a second there. Oh, my gosh. That is incredible. Look at that. All right, let me get a taste of this right now. Oh, boy. Uh-huh. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Oh my God. Was it worth it? <laughs> was it worth tending that fire all day? Yeah, oh my gosh. Yes, it was. This stuff right here. So when you peel back this skin, there's this layer and you peel that back, grab a little bit of that. That's like, I mean, it looks like prosciutto. I don't know exactly, but wow. Look at that. I'm get a bite of that right now. Mm. 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 
Wow, that is amazing. Whew. Okay, so serving it. I mentioned before there's a couple options. You could just have your guests come over, give them some tongs, give them some forks, and have them go to town on this pig and um, start pulling off what they want, putting it on their plates, making sandwiches, whatever you want to do. Um, if you don't want to present your pig like this in front of everybody, all you got to do is let it cool down a little bit like we've done here and go ahead and uh, get yourself a good pan like one of these guys here and just like you would a uh, Boston butt when you're making pulled pork just go ahead and start start pulling start pulling get it in your pan and bring all this delicious meat in for your guests to try get some chunks there you shred that up as it goes in what I like to do is get off the all this uh, meat here and then uh, if I can I'll pop loose pop loose this uh, rack of uh, ribs here and uh, this thing's gonna just start coming apart so I'm gonna go to work on this getting this all pulled and shredded into this pan and uh, show you what we got here along the way but what's really nice is you just uh, you pull this all off mix it all up because there's different flavors all throughout this pig and it just makes this big pile of amazing goodness with different flavors um, you know if you want here back on this end you've got your hams I'll show you what those look like when they come off but you can literally pull this thing off and you can see the big the big ham it's really awesome so I'm gonna go to work pulling this off and uh, show you more here in a minute all right so pulling apart this pig and shredding it is something that um, you know, you might want to take some time with because uh, there's so much amazing meat on this pig that uh, you really want to try to capture as much of it as possible. You can see it comes apart pretty easy. I've uh, actually taken off the lower portion of the, of the back leg here and look at this. Um, I'm trying to capture as much of this as possible for you because this, this is the ham coming off right there. See that? I'm going to roll this over. Look right here. You've got the delicious, uh, nicely toasted in, inside part of the ham. And this is actually a whole ham right here. It got the leg, I mean the bone through the inside right there. I'm just gonna actually put this right in the tray hole like that. We'll decide if we're gonna shred that up later or, or what we're gonna do with that. Might, um, depending on what we're gonna do with all this meat, we might package it up. Um, you know, just wanna feel around, find the bones and uh, you know, big chunks of cartilage, pull that off. This right here, some of that inside meat that, mm, the hard part really is not stopping to take a bite <laughs> every few seconds. But um, this is the skin. You see, I kind of, I pulled off a lot of that delicious meat off the skin. And uh, we're going to save that, get that in the mix. And then when you feel like you've got enough off there, just go ahead and grab that, pull that right off. There we go. Now, in here... A lot of this stuff is really good eating. You've got the skin here, which is really tough. Some people like to eat it. And then down below, some of this stuff, you know, check it out and see if it's soft. See if you want to throw that into the mix. Some of it's got a little, little burnt end like pieces that uh, create a lot of flavor. So you might want to set that aside, decide if you're going to chop some of that up and uh, put that into the mix later. Down here, look at this. This piece right here, I mean, the whole pig is just incredible in flavor. But see this piece right here? Shred off the meat, chop off this other stuff in here, put that in the mix. All this right here, uh, the flavor is off the chart so good. So you definitely will want to save this. Some of it might require a little chopping. But uh, this is basically the, the rib tips right here. There's actually still bone in this. So we're going to want to be careful and separate that. I'm going to set that aside for now. Get that in the pan. We'll come back and we'll separate all that later so we can continue on here. Look at all this meat coming right off of the uh, rib cage here. Here's where, if you want, you can, if you're careful, you can just pull this rib cage right off. And uh, there you go. You've got a nice little rack of ribs. I didn't leave much meat on the outside there. But if you uh, wanted to, you could leave that meat kind of on there and you can create some uh, little rack of ribs to chew on. 
but we're going to go ahead and again set this off to the side over there and deal with that a little bit later and you've got all this meat here that is just really nicely shreddable i got on the uh, table here it's butcher paper with a layer of plastic underneath so when we're done shredding all this meat up i'm just going to go ahead and untape that uh plastic from underneath the table roll this right up be easy cleanup so look at the other side here look how easy that comes apart i'm gonna go ahead and separate that there we go hey look at that oh my goodness so you know it's one of those things oh my oh <laughs> it's hard to jabber on about this but right there that stuff let me get a little bit of that oh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. that's that belly oh my gosh it's incredible. I'm going to pull that stuff off of there. And, uh, you know, just don't be afraid to go at it. All this stuff right here, shred that meat off. Add that in the mix. That is delicious. Good eating right there. Right here, we've got this front trotter. Tear the sucker. Skin's a little tough, so I'm going to give that a cut. Bone falling out of it. Joint falling out of it. There we go. I've uh, got all the stuff that I want to keep out of there, so get rid of that. Bone, nice chunk of meat right there. Throw that into the mix. Oh, yeah. I think I've uh, done a pretty good job here with this. Let's just take this and slice that and examine what we got here. go this is what's left of the back trotter yeah there's we got the meat out of there that's good throw that in the discard pile yeah there's a little bone in there good meat here yeah i think we're good with this there we go and now here's the uh the head nothing left on that inside here Definitely take your time sorting through this, peeling this apart. Some really good meat up in here around the, the jowl area here. Some of the most tender and delicious and uh, incredible meat. So just take your time with that, peeling all that up and uh, taking the meat out and adding that to the mix because that stuff is just incredible. I say that word a lot because man there's some good stuff in there so uh make sure you get all that out of there clean it out nicely okay set that aside over here all right and then you see here the other half there's that shoulder that's that pulled pork shoulder right there take the shoulder that uh, upper arm bone out of there and then we've got the big shoulder bone Right there. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. And a uh, little piece of cartilage. Can get rid of that. It's hot still. My gosh. Yeah. But uh, this. That's all. That's all meat right there. That's all that shoulder. And get that into the pan there. Let that cool off a little more. Shred that up. And then uh, here's that other ham right here. There's the lower leg still attached. Let's go ahead and remove that. That out of there. Take off this other ham here. That just pulls right apart. Look at that deliciousness. Hey, look at that. It's like a Christmas ham. Boom, put that in there. And then again, all we got left here is uh, 
look at this incredible delicious meat wow hot shred that out down here there's your belly you pull that off separate that we're going to take that and we're going to shred this meat off of here make sure we get all the bones out chop that up a little bit put that in the pan and then you've got your ribs right here your loin up top look how tender that is just beautiful now when you serve this you know there's a lot of sauces you know you just look into that that you can um, put there available for your guests for your family barbecue sauce is great a little uh southern carolina style uh, mustard or vinegar based sauce really really great but check this out you can end up with these little rib bones here which are fun to chew on because there's some really tasty meat on the inside of that mm -hmm. well that good stuff right there mm -hmm. that actually has that barbecue rub on it we start off with so really mm. that's it just pull all that meat Shred it up, get it in the pan. I think you get the idea. A lot of meat here, so let me redirect the camera to my pan. And there is um, there's a lot of it. That pan is piled full, and there's still some more meat over here on the table to get into that pan. And that's it. And there's still a little work to do here because I want to take all night here, but. Uh, there's a lot of meat here. There's some bones in here that I'm going to pull out and clean up these ribs here too. Get that all shredded up and into the mix. That's going to be one extremely flavorful pan full of pork meat. Look at that. That back there has a ham. My gosh, that's good stuff. So that's it. Um, yeah, it takes, some, it takes a long time, but the uh, result is incredible. You got a huge pile of pulled pork to... Um, just devour. You're going to need a lot of people to eat this much meat or do like what we do, cook it all up, enjoy what we can on the first night, package it, package it up into gallon Ziploc bags and uh, put it in the freezer and pull a bag out every now and then and enjoy. And uh, well, that's basically it. So I hope that you found this video uh, interesting. I appreciate you for watching. Make sure to uh, add your comments and questions. To the comment section check the uh, description for for uh, any links that i might have put in there for you things to find and uh, again thanks a lot for being here and uh, smoke on take care